right, everyone. Welcome back to Cody's lab. So today, I have a bunch of cans. See, I've been collecting these for several years now. I've just basically been saving them. I don't throw them away because I thought I'd make something out of them eventually. And today, I'm gonna do that. I've decided to turn them into aluminum powder for thermite. <laughs> so the first step in this process is to make sure they are very dry, as moisture will cause major problems later on. Second, I need to crush the cans so that they take up less volume. This way they fit into the crucible so that I can melt them down into a more convenient shape. This also removes all the excess junk such as the paint and the plastic liner that comes with the can. So here we go. I melted down about 300 cans and I was able to make these two chunks of aluminum here. Now I need to make it into smaller pieces again. For that I'm going to use this lathe. So I got a carbide bit and this will spin around and I'll just be able to cut it into thin ribbons. Uh, it's even better. It's coming off in chips. I'm trying to capture them using this plate here. It uh, seems to not be working all that well. I'll just uh, vacuum them up. Here's the ball mill that my dad and I built a few years ago. I'll post a link down in the description for that video. But I'm going to use it to convert these aluminum turnings into even smaller bits. So I'm going to add them in there along with some iron balls to do the crushing. These aluminum turnings, when they get smashed by the balls, will break up into smaller pieces. Very simple. <laughs> See how it did. I only let it run for about an hour. I didn't want it to be a super fine powder. Yeah, you can see the, the bits are still recognizable. But yeah, I think that's about what I wanted. Let's get it out of there. There we go. Anything it takes up much less space now. <laughs> so now this material is a variety of sizes and I would like to separate it out. The larger pieces are more difficult to ignite and burn whereas the smaller pieces are form far more reactive. If I can separate them I can make materials which burn at different rates 
and different difficulties for ignition. Let's see, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> so here we are. I've segregated the powder into fine, medium, and coarse. Let's go make some thermite. So for my thermite mix, I'm going to start with 10 grams of the fine aluminum powder. Add this to the foil dish on the scale. There we go. And to this, I'm going to add 33 grams of black iron oxide. So this is iron 2,3 oxide or magnetite. Uh, usually people use red iron oxide or rust. But I find the black iron oxide burns better, it's easier to light, and it's easier for me to get. I can actually just extract it from a stream bed using a magnet and then take that magnetite sand and crush it to a powder in my ball mill. But red iron oxide does also work. We'll, we'll try burning some of that also. So let's get this mixed up. I've got thermite made from pop cans and sand. <laughs> so here's our thermite mix. I'm going to add this to a little ceramic bowl to act as the reaction vessel. And on top of that I'm going to add a little bit of this ignition mixture I made. There we go. Now, touch it off the torch. There it goes. Oh, my bowl broke. It always happens. <laughs> It is. Some aluminum oxide slag and liquid iron. Got some tongs. Let's cool it off. <laughs> the iron was still melted. There is a little blob of metal. Yep, so there's the lumina. It's magnetic iron. Nice. Here's a bunch of the thermite made with the red iron oxide with the medium coarse aluminum powder. And to light it, I'm going to add some of my black oxide thermite to it. And a little bit of this mystery powder. All right, so I've just got it in a little glass cup. Let's see what happens. Red iron oxide throws material around more. I assume it's got moisture in it.
of watching the powder fall into the reaction. And that was with the coarser powder. So the fine, easy to light thermite was able to light the more difficult to light stuff. So there you have it, thermite made with pop cans. That could be the end of the video, but I do have some cans left and I got thinking. Converting these cans to powder, that's a lot of labor. It is necessary to make a material which can be ignited easily, but once the reaction's going, it can consume thicker, coarser materials. If I got the reaction going big enough and hot enough, could I perhaps burn the can as a whole. So take a measured amount of the iron 23 oxide, the magnetite sand, add that straight to the can, and then crush it as is. Will this burn? You know, if I get a good reaction and added this to it, it's just like a really large particle, right? Well, one way to find out. So I've got about 10 pounds, roughly four and a half kilos of thermite in here made with the coarse and semi-coarse material, along with a little bit of fine. And then the cans are another 40 pounds. So in theory, that's 50 pounds of thermite, something like 22 kilos. I don't know if these are gonna burn though, so. Okay. So, I dug a pit in my yard, so you can see. I tried to dry the ground out by lighting a fire in it, but it really didn't work, so I'm gonna try to line at least the bottom of the hole with some dry silica sand, just so I don't end up with a big steam explosion or something. Okay, I'm gonna start stacking cans. So it takes about eight cans to make one pound of the thermite. So 50 times eight, that's about 400 cans total that I'm gonna be burning in just a little while. <laughs> Sounds like fun. I hope it works. Okay, glasses, glove, I think I'm ready as I'm gonna be. Let's see what happens. And it's off. already escaping outside. Okay. Gas coming off the cans, probably the paint burning off of them.
Look at me, just a little campfire in my backyard. <laughs> I actually like that it's not going very fast. Just a nice, gentle, very energetic reaction. Oh yeah, you can see the cans melting into the mixture. <laughs> I was worried that maybe it'd like have like steam explosions from the paint and the liner going in, but it seems to be doing pretty okay. Let's stir up the shovel a little bit. The radiant heat is intense. I hope the camera's okay. Okay, there's the last of the that can that I had in there. Yeah. Okay, I'm probably ruining my shovel. That's hot. That's very hot. That's it though. Oh, I got like steam coming off of my leg. I can see. That's it though. Burned it up. Looks like there's part of a can left. Not anymore. I probably ruined the temper of my shovel. I tried to cool it down, but uh, oh well. Big pit of lava. some sticks that fell into it. I've got the glow of this very hot thing illuminating me. <laughs> oh, that was fun. I, it worked brilliantly. I couldn't have asked for better. Yeah, you can see it reflecting on my glasses. It's been an hour and it's still glowing. Even if I turn on the light, it's still yeah, you, know, you can tell that it's still glowing red hot here. Let's see if I can roast a marshmallow. <laughs> That's after an hour of cooling. <laughs> so hot. Look how the, the sand is doing weird things. Like, what is this? It's like erupted through it or something. Oh yeah, you see how it moved? You can also hear it crackling. There's cracks forming. Yeah, I'm just gonna let it keep cooling. Maybe even till morning. So here we are, it's been 13 hours, as you can see it snowed, and it still feels a little bit warm. It's crazy. And what's interesting is it's lifted up here a little bit, off the sand. I wonder what caused that. I guess I see it over on this side as well. Well, let's dig it up. Oh, 
Okay, so this is my slag right here. My iron is right there. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Oh, it's warm. You can see the snow melting when it hits it. <laughs> that's heavy. Oh no, it broke. That's some interesting colors though, look at that. So the metal is brittle. My guess is that a little excess aluminum in there. Maybe some other contaminants from the, the cans that didn't get burned off. Yeah, look at that. It's got some interesting crystal structures. And there you see that. It's very shiny. Let's see if it's magnetic. Yeah, it is magnetic. So basically I have a big chunk of impure iron. Uh, the plastic and the paint from the cans. My guess is it in incorporated a lot of hydrogen into the metal and hydrogen causes it to be very brittle that's why it broke also the slow cooling caused the large crystals it's very pretty though look at that the rainbow coloration the thin oxide films let's see what the iron yield was so that's uh just under 20 pounds of iron. Let's have a look at this slag, shall we? So first of all, we got the sand, which is fused to the side. Looks like some glass where the sand melted, mixed with the alumina. There's little bits of iron in here. So not all the iron made it to the bottom. Let's break that apart. This material is basically sapphire. It's just polycrystalline and full of bubbles and contaminants. The dark coloring is probably iron oxide that dissolved into it. There's little bits of iron here. They didn't make it down to the bottom. So oh, there you go, thermite and iron from aluminum soda cans. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.